Did you enjoy the episode, Mitch? I did. I did. I. It, it was not the one I was expecting. I didn't think we'd get the ice planet straight away. Yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, I didn't expect it to be so soon. I really thought this was going to be the water one. I think everybody thought it was going to be the water planet one because, like, I thought it was confirmed when they shared a tweet, that, like, screenshots from the trailer of that, but I think it was just because the description said he's ferrying a passenger. Everyone yeah. assumed, oh, it must be that episode, but it's just... With the bar, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, except it's just it wasn't. The, yeah, but uh, I, I feel like that's going to be the next one. I feel like the planet that he's taking her to is going to be a water planet. Unless yeah, I I'm think that's going to be next episode. And... They're frogs, so, so I'm they're hoping yes. they're going to be somewhere that's where true. there's amphibious. That is, that is true. Also, I just want to draw attention to the fact that I'm wearing an on-brand t-shirt. Got the wolf pack. Cool. Yay! Go, Dave, Dave would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'm actually surprised that the, the wolf pack logo isn't somewhere on Trapper's ex, on Trapper Wolf's X wing Yeah, that's I a good point. That's a good uh, point. I, I, I'm sure that... I, I would have thought that had been worked in somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I, yet, I'd anyway. say... I love the way that they've used the sort of um, New Republic X-Wing pilots through the series so far. It's sort of like, um, it's got the same sort of vibe of like in any kind of um, um, Midwest set that American TV show when like the sheriff pulls up in the squad car sort of thing, you know. <laughs> uh, but I I would have liked it if X-Wings were like a little bit more customized because I kind of like, I really, really like that aesthetic of like sort of how the rebellion differs from the Empire and like, they sort of have their own custom paint jobs and so on. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I like the, um, how do you describe it? I like the, the way that the, it, it, we're being shown how the New Republic's um, policing of the galaxy has been going and how it's, it's not, how do you describe it? It's not, it's not perfect, I guess. Like they're then a little bit, I mean, I guess Mando was on the wrong side of the, of the, the law anyway. So it's like, he sort of brought it on himself, but, I don't know, the way that it's a little bit like um, they're very, uh, I don't know, like the way that they just um, demolished that bounty hunter facility in in episode six, I want to say, of last season um, when they caught the fugitive there. It's just like they're, they seem a little, a little trigger happy, but I like that. Yeah. They're, not, they're not like, it's not, they're not necessarily the good guys because they're with the rebellion and that you know that that was an interesting thing that was brought up um i think um oh god what's his name the um um is he, does he even have a name the client he's just, he's just the client isn't he um Bernhard he's just character. called the client one, yeah just the client yeah. which is yeah. very strange he never had a yeah. name but the, the know what's he, <laughs> yeah but the whole thing that he brought up about how by any uh, merit of what you want to judge that the, the galaxy is worse off without the empire and that it's gone into chaos since, around me i see only uh, chaos rebellion. yes thank you xander um exactly but yeah like just the fact that the seeing the galaxy sort of go into i don't know go into a bit of it's like it's not they haven't exactly made things better yet they're still working on building to that's, a, that's frontier law rather than martial law at the moment. Yeah, is the thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially in the outer rim. Exactly. Well, like, yeah, I don't know. But that flying sequence was so good. I loved that whole that was, part. Yeah, it was I really, really loved that. That was really. I like they um, like I, I can we talk about the VFX? Like I thought oh, the man. last episode is just like okay, <laughs> they, they this ramped is, it up this in this episode a lot. Here. But here, it's like, oh no, oh my god, this is amazing. The whole sequence yeah. when they came down into the canyon, I thought, there's not one thing here that doesn't look 100% real. It's just so good. Yeah, so, like, even very well done. Spiders, like, those are brilliant. So um, good. Yeah, and I, uh, can I just say, Din is rubbish at flying in really bad <laughs> situations. Yeah, he tends, the, the things tend to always go bad when he's um, um, put in charge of, like, <laughs> getting him out for a tight spot. It always yeah. seems to be... The ship gets trashed after it, you know. <laughs> I don't like, even I, know how that thing's surviving. It's crazy. It, it's just they don't build them like they used to. I guess those things are just indestructible. <laughs> but but yeah, I do like that. Um, yeah, that was a very tense opening uh, chase. I, I like it. It, it wasn't really a dogfight. It's just a chase sequence, but very dangerous, intense one. Yeah. More we more often see like dog fights and stuff in Star Wars, but this is just cool. Like this is just a chase. They didn't actually open fire at any point. It was just like trying to evade them. Um, 
but yeah, that that looked that looks stunning. The the VFX on that, and then like Zana said, the, the the spiders later they looked as as <laughs> as as, as, <laughs> as horrific as they looked. VFX wise, they did look very oh, yeah. impressive. As yeah, as someone who's afraid of spiders, they did very well. <laughs> I also I found the name of them, the name of the species. I, what I are they called? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I'll put it in the group chat, Zan, and you can figure it out. Oh yeah, uh, let me just open up. Um, oh, they would just get some blood. Yeah, <laughs> I actually gross. I found myself I found myself arguing about arguing with someone on Reddit about them because I shared a link to like the Wikipedia article. So yeah, they're called Krikna. They're in an episode of Star Wars Krikna. Rebels. Oh, Krikna, saying, yeah. No, no, it's the doubly white spider, which is from concept for Dagobah for the Empire Strikes Back. I'm like, ah. yeah, but that's what this is. What they do in Star Wars, they take the concept art and they make something out of it. And that's yeah, but yeah, it's called a I'll, Krikna. I'll admit. No, I believe. I'll admit the mouth hmm. is different on these things that it is in that concept art of the spider, but it could be easy easy just yeah. to say that this is a subspecies or something, or they're a little different. Um, you had a subspecies yeah, that, of crate dragon in the last episode, yeah, so that is, that is very yeah, true. Yeah. It's the same thing. I, yeah. you know, this, it's, this straight yeah. up, this concept art is like exactly how it's portrayed in the show, though. Like the even to fact it's laying the eggs, and the eggs look exactly the same as they did. Oh the yeah, I forgot like about that completely. I'll put them up. It's yeah, that's here yeah. somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's completely the way it was um, uh, drawn in Ralph Corey's artwork. Um, but yeah, I always love seeing like. That's what I'm consistently doing with The Mandalorian. I always really appreciate it when it's like, here's this one random thing from Star Wars and we'll throw it in here because it's cool to reference the entire universe of Star mm. Wars and it's something that the most fans might not have seen. You know, I like that well, we did that last week. We had the Crate Dragon. Now we have this. I like that, um, yeah, when they do stuff like that. Yeah, and I think also, like, even, like, I think... With the earliest like trilogy series, like we see these big monsters and stuff, but like mm. in the new um, trilogy that just finished, there's nothing much that's like a big like like creature coming at you. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to see that they're doing that in the TV show still, um, and just ugh, yeah. God, <laughs> oh, why just why spiders? <laughs> Anything but that. I just heard like at, at once, like when I heard like the, ch -ch -ch, I was like, okay, no, it's just... yeah. <laughs> We'll get to the baby in a second because the oh. baby is going to be major talking about this episode. Yes. But when when he, when when he reached into the egg and like pulled out little one, I was saying, "You just went, oh no!" Like, yeah, oh, I know what that is. That's not good. And yeah, there's oh, like, I know what those are. So many and it looks around. like a spider too. So I was yeah. like, I was like, please, <laughs> no, just be a scorpion or something. Like, I'm fine with scorpions. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh. But but yeah, no, they were they were a very um. Same as a great dragon. Very random. I was not expecting those to just turn up out of nowhere. Yeah, but, I didn't expect that either. But it was, yeah, very cool. They made an I appearance. Think it's, but um, hmm. it's part of the trick too. Um, the way they do uh continuity references and like sort of featuring stuff from the larger canon in Mando that I think sets hmm. it apart from a lot of other things where they're not doing it for the sake of like for nostalgia and like sort of trying to make it like a yeah. selling point of like saying oh my god look it's this you remember this from this show or this film or something it's not the they they're putting them in there knowing that it's very likely probably about five people watching the show are going to go oh oh my god it's that thing and you know dave and john are yeah. going to be like tapping each other's shoulder going, look it's the thing but then <laughs> but instead they have it featured in the way of like it's really really obscure but then then becomes more well known because of the Mandalorian. There's so many more people now that are going to know what a great dragon is. Because, I mean, even just, like, think about mm, how, yeah. and, you know, in pop culture, them was, you know. They know who Boba Fett is. Yeah. Maybe they know who Django is. But they wouldn't know of someone who wears that helmet, wears that sort of suit, that's a Mandalorian, you know. I feel like that's something the show does really, really well. Of, like, yeah. taking taking obscure elements and then elevating them into yeah i agree because yeah. even like i'll just say because like even though we've watched clone wars and stuff and we mm. always talk about that stuff i just thought like even before watching clone wars that there was only the death watch mandalorians i didn't really understand yeah. that there was like a whole thing of mandalorians so then watching clone wars and then watching this it was like oh 
there's more so it's always like a like a learning experience coming into different like parts of the star wars universe and especially with the mandalorian like you learn so much like about the creed and everything and i'm glad that they expand upon it in the show yeah. and even that's another thing um I, since we were going to talk about the baby before i was gonna say at the beginning of the episode din was gonna give up his jetpack for the baby <laughs> and i was like dude that's huge <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I remember I said and watched that moment. I felt like, like, well, one, it's like, you know, uh, so sweet that he's like willing to like, you know, do whatever he can to protect, um, protect the child. But then at the moment I said that there's no way he's letting that guy live after he threatened the baby. Yeah. This, no he's to- that guy's dead, yeah. you know, <laughs> and then showed up. It's just like, I did love the, just like, they just, you know, flies him up and kill, uh, you know, flies him up, drops him down, looks at him and just, and it just brings jetpack down, like you know, it's like yeah. you know, it's just such a normal thing. He's just uh, like, eh, there's been worse. I, I did. I saw everyone talking about it on Twitter uh, this morning, but like how that little moment is just like when he lets the baby go, and it's just he runs towards Din with his hands raised, like because yeah. he got scared. Like You're so that was, cute. That was that was so sweet. Just like but, yeah, but it's like I I do like um that yeah showing moments like that where it's like he really does. You know, they really, they really do both really care about each other, and I like I like we got we got a uh, a decent bit of that of like um, then later in the episode, all the interactions of them like sort of um, how do you describe it like arguing of, well, not arguing with each other it's like you know, no, stop it stop doing that like, yeah you and know, just like the no <laughs> and I did, I did like the bit when when she left the ship and he came to tell him he's like what 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 is it you know he's just like trying to you know. She's gone, you know. <laughs> I'm look. I'm looking forward to seeing like stuff like that and like how he develops. But for his character in this okay. episode, I like that we're seeing like very much the um like how Yoda's betrayed in the original tri- uh, when he first appears in Empire is very like, you know, like stop it, stop doing that, you know, that's sort of like that, you know, just doing whatever he wants, sort of uh, way. Like- like you know it's like the fact that they the ship almost crashed almost died and he just finds him he's still trying to eat the eggs like yeah. stop it you it's know like, <laughs> petulant child yeah. um but even just talking about the child i like that the passenger was kind of like a challenge for din um because yeah. even though he has had a bit of character development already in past two episodes he still has that harshness from last season um, yeah. which I said in my reaction, I think that's just past, part, excuse me, part of his personality. Um, mm. But I like the fact that with this particular character, she challenged him a lot in terms of not only did she wake up like a, a robot, but like she, um, yeah. she also was like, you know, like challenging his creed and even just challenging him in yeah. the fact that she's exactly like him. She's trying to protect her child or children. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, in that moment where he looks down at Baby Yoda, he's like, oh, shit, she's in the exact same position as I am. So yeah. I think that was, like, nice. And I hope that we mm. get to see more of those challenges for him. Because I think, like, Baby Yoda, obviously, is changing him a lot. Um, but it also, mm. I think, it'll make him be a little bit more compassionate towards other people he comes across. I think that, that'll that probably be, like, a big thing this season, I reckon, of, like, seeing, um, seeing Dean out of his comfort zone a lot more. I think. And already with, with Cobb, we sort of like, you know, had sort of like quite a bit of camaraderie with Cobb, but he's like someone who's like very much from his world, you know, he's like, he's an another sort of like, you know, kind of loner figure, sort of like, you know, trying to look out for his people. And so that's sort of like someone he can easily yeah. connect with, but I'm, I'm intrigued to see what else they do of like having situations where he has to connect to someone who's like extremely different to him and like but then also like in the same sort of situations like you know frog lady is sort of as you said just very different to him at first but then like he's in the exact same situation so like he can empathize even though they're very different people and you know this sort of like mm-hmm. having having a passenger you know transporting a bucket full of babies isn't this the last thing he'd expect to be doing on the razor crest yeah. but i i do like that it didn't just go from uh, I don't think this happened like yeah, at any point in the series. Then just go from he's this sort of hardened bounty hunter, not really like you know worried about anyone, and then he takes in the child, and then he's a good guy. So he's always still sort of he was worrying about him and the child first, and but then through the child, he's like learning to be a little more compassionate towards others. Um, and I think that that's like 
yeah, I, I think it's just like the child is just like sort of inherently um, he can connect with people more naturally than Din can just because as being a force user, he just can. He can just sort of, you know, sense stuff better than Din can. So then he just connects with people more and then that's helping him to see people and see uh, the world that sort of same way. Though his force connection didn't do anything to stop him from eating the the eggs. I don't know what. <laughs> I, just, I thought he was like doing something to kind of like yeah. I don't know. I do thought he, something. I, thought he, I my yeah. first thought was he's gonna start eating them. I oh, don't eat them. Okay, maybe he's like doing something to help. Them. No, he is actually eating them. Okay. Yeah, because I was like, oh, maybe he's like trying to I don't know sense with them or some, oh, something yeah. like that. It's like, and then oh, what just are they, like, what yeah, are these? Just... Oh, they're sentient. Oh, even better. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's silly. Yeah, it's I I am in. I'm we talk about the like, um the uh, directing. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, this episode was directed by Peyton Reed, who directed mm. Ant-Man and Ant-Man the Wasp, which uh, I will, yeah. I will I'll die on the hill that Ant-Man and the Wasp is a really, really good movie and is one of the best cinema-going experiences I've ever experienced. But yeah, I saw... Um, there, was the thing that some, there was a thing I saw someone point out of, like, said that they they realised it was Peyton Reed directing as soon as the, <laughs> as soon as the ant turned up for the start of it, Dr. Mandible. <laughs> uh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's a good that's point. I didn't, I didn't even make it until yeah. afterwards. I read about it. Yeah. Of course. Uh, but then, and then as well, like just spiders, like the idea of just having like a big old, you know, horde of insects, you know, going along, you know, through through tunnels is like, yeah, yeah that's very Ant Man visual. Yeah, and even just in the second half of the episode, but, even thinking uh, about it, cool. everything was like bigger than Din and Baby Yoda and that yeah that, yeah that lady. So yeah. perfect. I think that's um. I really like the idea that, um, I mean, yeah, for all we know, this could be like, it could be the sort of thing on like this planet where like, you know, just the way gravity works, the way the atmosphere works, like everything is huge. Mm. And like, you know, if there was a native mm. humanoid species there, they'd probably be enormous as well. And these are all, you know, possibly this yeah. is the place where all these spiders evolved just as like a normal insect size thing. Huh. Ended up on a few other planets here and there. Maybe nope. someone take it back. Like the concept art version. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, that concept art at the end. I was like, get it away from me. <laughs> just like, why? I just saw it. I don't need to see it again. Oh, yeah. The possibilities of like other Mandalorians obviously survived, but like yeah. surviving the Navarro attack. So I was thinking um just because there's a whole thing on tumblr as well that's where i usually get my info i talk to people about the mandalorian mm. um but a lot of people are wondering if paz Vizla, i think that's his name the blue mandalorian we saw last season oh um, John. yeah 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 oh yeah may have survived um and maybe want to be one of the mandalorians that might be on the water planet so even i was thinking okay. in Maybe. Might be a possibility. I'm not sure because I went back and I watched obviously the first season a couple of times and I was like, please, his armor don't be there because I I kind of liked him, even though he was a very like rough character. Mm. Um, I would like to find out more about more of um Din's clan and stuff like yeah. that. So may, I'm just hoping he may have survived. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I think he. Oh, uh, why? <laughs> oh, God. Why? <laughs> Why? Sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> oh, no. no, it's fine. But just, I just saw the leg. That's all I saw, yeah. and I was like, "No, I'm out. <laughs> Get me out." Um, of this. But yeah, no, it's interesting. Like, I guess I did think when, when they mentioned that as a whole, like, other Mandalorians that are around, I did think like, is that going to be something connecting to to Bo and oh, yes. her Mandalorians? Like, because there's the they're, they're like those Mandalorians, um, like a clan that we do know is sort of around, if she's alive, but I don't think they kill her off screen, so she must be alive. Yeah, but, I hope they didn't kill her off screen. That's just yeah. helpful. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, if the, 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 her Mandalorian group could be around somewhere, but I'm interested mm -hmm. to see. I, I feel like, like, um, and yeah, uh, uh, Vizsla could be, could be with them, but I feel like, um, so actually, just the fact, the fact of saying that there's, you know, another group of Mandalorians nearby, I feel like it's probably not just going to be, oh, they're just some Mandalorians. Like, I think it'd be, <clears throat> I get the feeling it's going to be actual, like, they're Mandalorians we know. Well, yeah. I, I, that's the sort of, th I think, I think, the sort of thing I'd expect them to do. Same as how, when we went to Tatooine, there was a Mandalorian mm. that we knew about there. That's just the feeling I got that I think it's probably going to be, probably going to be someone we know. 
with that yeah. group. Yeah. True, true. Maybe. So I look forward to it anyway, whichever Mandalorian it might be. I think I like the idea that um, whichever members of the Covert that are still around, they're all divided and split up. I, mm. I think that'll be something to do with it. I don't think that'll be in the same place. And like, because last we saw, um, Amara was just on her own. I, I really, 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 really hope Amara comes back. <laughs> Hope so. She She's was probably amazing. Probably my favorite character for the first season. Yeah, I think, and like, I remember, um, because like I've yeah went into it and like, oh wow, this is an awesome character. Emily Swallow. She's an awesome actress. But um, I I personally think that she's a Mandalorian armorer. She knows how to work Beskar in the way that very few others do, and like certainly seem like just among the covert, she's the only one that really knows about like you know how to forge Beskar and so on, not just yeah. but from having yeah. tools to do it, but like she's the only one that actually knows all about the minutiae of how to do it. I reckon that um, um, Moff Gideon wouldn't want her dead. Oh no, definitely yeah. not. He would want, he would want, if he could have a Mandalorian forge master at his own, at his mm-hmm. side, someone to, um, he's already got the dark saber, which is a symbol of leadership to the Mandalorians. He really, really, really wanted to establish himself as someone with control over them. He would get his own set of Beskar armor made. That's true. Ooh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's so, interesting. Oh, oh, that yeah. one's good. Yeah, like I think the one, one of my favorite little touches is just showing his power that he had, like, and how much resources he has at his disposal. It's just the mo, the how in- powerful a moment it is when. Um, you know, the, the, they're all in the, the, the cantina with, <clears throat> with the clients and the whole thing just gets ripped to shreds by laser bolts. Everyone goes down, look out the window and it's just a squadron of death troopers. And like, we, we, this is the first pristine time we've seen armor as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah pristine. And, yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. This is the first time we've seen death troopers, like outside of like the rogue one sort of pre new hope era like yeah and even then we only really see them in squads of four at any given yeah, time, not like like time. That and this is like this is like a full, is a full squad of them yeah, yeah. I, I like the touch showing how dangerous they are that like it that they two of them almost did take down din by themselves mm. yeah exactly it was crazy like they're because that's been the main thing that i think I, you can sort of gather from the way they betrayed in rogue one but i think it's directly said but like they're all they're most of them are cybernetically augmented they're <laughs> like they're not they're not human anymore basically yeah. they've had stuff they're done just... to them they're stronger mm-hmm. faster and yeah they're, they're, and that's like like i like that they'll portray the way that like, they can almost take down the train mandalorian with well if, and if he didn't have backup they might have been able to bring him down oh definitely if um what's her name again kara kara, kara yeah kara yeah. was wasn't there he didn't probably would have been overrun very easily no but um yeah, it's like the the idea of what Gideon has at his disposal is pretty scary, considering it's like the way we've seen the Empire sort of betrayed for the whole of the season. This was like, with up until that point, it was just like there, there's hardly any of them left. Their armor's banged up for the stormtroopers. Like, they don't have a lot of resources. They're in hiding. And then a f- seemingly fully functioning stormtrooper division just comes in, like, with seemingly just being abs- ready to deploy as soon as the situation was needed. Yeah, I was going to talk about that because we I think we briefly spoke about it last week and I was reading up on it as well. Mm. Um, like the fact that, you know, it, it's apparent like in this time and they they kind of think that it's completely gone, but in reality, it's like laying low. Um, yeah. But I guess, and that's, yeah, that's the tricky thing because I was even thinking like, how does Gideon get all these particular forces at his disposal? Mm. Um, so he's not he's not the head of like, this whole thing, right? Just like well, he's a asking mo- both of you because you guys are like the professionals. He's, he's of this. a moth, and there's there's not a book many- about this. Oh, <laughs> go, okay. Go ahead, then. <laughs> it's one of the it's one of the biggest plot lines running through um, the sort of first few chapters of that. That um, once the once the emperor was killed, the empire sort of they basically split apart into a bunch of different factions. Um, all of the different offs sort of like having their own fleets and so on sort of just saying well th- this is my fleet with i'm the true empire and then everybody was saying no i'm the true empire and so on and everybody else sort of like is sort of very much divided i imagine that gideon and his 
group were probably one of those factions that sort of like we're just going to sort of keep to ourselves a little bit sort of keep to the shadows yeah and probably staying around mandalorian space which is i would assume what he was in charge of because i believe it's okay. um yeah that um if I remember right a moth by the proper like star wars definition of it is like that's someone who has both both military command and governmental. Yeah, I just wanted to share share this in the group chat because it's a really cool image that I just saw when throwing it up. Looking at the yeah. dark saber, this is a little artwork someone did of when we last saw the dark saber before. Um, a spider, god damn it! Before um, Mando. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. the last time we saw it. Ooh. That was when Sabine gave it to Bo, and then she used it to like as showing like she's now the leader of that like she's going to try and unite the mandalorian clans yeah um uh also i just saw a quote there when i looked at the page so yeah all we know is that she gave it to gave it to Bo. Bo said you know she accepted it in memory of her sister um kind of dark i realized Ma- maul used that to kill the team yeah um and for yeah. the honor of honor of her clan and mandalore itself she was going to accept this and use this to like lead mandalore that sort of thing reunite the clans right that was last when you that was i don't know when but it's about about two years before uh a new hope i think uh cut to where we yeah. are with mando that's nine years after a new hope um which is yeah which is yeah five years after return of the jedi yeah. and yeah gideon has it we don't know why he has it i just saw that quote underneath that said behind the scenes that quote from giancarlo on filming with the dark saber he said I've gone through two, three, three and a half. I think, I think I've broken already. I go at it. Like, I go at it. I've broken a few of them to the point where the prop guys, they love me. So he's he's, <laughs> he's, he's broken three Darksabers yeah. from filming with it. All right. So, okay. There's going to be a lot of fights then with, with yeah. it. All right. I'm cool, excited. Cool, cool. So, yeah, he's, he, he's, as he's, yeah, the prop guys, oh, they, they love him. He's broken I mean, either it's them. a lot or it's a very intense fight, which yeah. I'm, I'm all yeah. in for. Yeah, yeah. Also, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of curious what he means. He said he's broken th- three and a half. Like, what does he mean? Did he break it? And then, I guess he broke it and they fixed it. I don't know. Yeah. And then they broke it and they like, just, oh, we can't make any more. We got to like, like blow the it together. Yeah, Morton exactly. style. They just go back together. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I think, oh, um, because my thinking since the, I remember when I first saw like the interview and he said that quote, and this is also when some of the rumored castings of like some of the guest stars are going around. My thinking was that I think there'll be a flashback where he duels. Bo-Katan, I think. Yeah. Ooh. That'll be the first fight. Then there'll be another one later on when, like, in the present, when, like, someone will duel Gideon and claim the Darksaber from him. Yeah. Then that's what I think will happen. That's I... just the guess that I've had for, like, um, quite a while since just first seeing that quote. But I thought yeah. that'd be. And I, they had the. They seem like they might be opening up to having more flashbacks in the show, especially of, like, yeah. the one that they had for Cobb before so i like, thought okay, yeah okay 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 cool 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 <laughs> give it to us <laughs> yeah that, that, they're right i just wanted to fact check that but that, there's a little something i'm uh we uh had a conversation about this uh, the other day xander i'm curious about the fact that like how do you describe like uh, like the, the, uh, so basically best car can repel lightsaber strikes a lightsaber can't oh a lightsaber can yeah. like probably like if you stabbed it into it and like really like pushed in and pushed against it you probably burn through it eventually yeah. but if you like slash at someone with best guy a glancing just, blow it'll bounce off oh. or like it won't it won't cut it'll probably leave a burn on it but it won't cut through um but then you raise an interesting points there which is in in uh season four of rebels we see this weapon that the empire has developed for to fight against mandalorians uh, that basically it is a sort of electricity based weapon and it like hits the best scar and cause it to like supercharge and it basically disintegrates the, whoever's wearing it and their armor because they just it just activates the best scar it just it just kills them because it heats yeah. it up so much as a thing and that was a weapon that uh, Sabine was forced to help create when she was working with the empire one of the reasons she left and tried to warn everybody about what was happening with it but didn't believe her and then people died unfortunately but she was out to destroy the weapon but the point is that there was like an elect- electricity based weapon that they used to you know it could damage Veska and it could kill people that were wearing Veska. and you raise interesting points out that while the dark saber has like white electricity along the blade of it 
And so you said, what if it can cut through Beskar? And that's what makes it. It's a Mandalorian Ooh. built lightsaber. What mm. if it's special abilities? It can damage and or even cut through Beskar. Whereas that's a good can't. point. Yeah. It's very interesting. Mandal- yeah. Okay. Mandalorian, like uh, Tarvisla, forged mm. the Darksaber eons ago. He would know all about the unique properties of Beskar that could be, you know, he'd want something. I mean, if he was making something like making his own weapon, his own lightsaber is like, it's sort of like a nice thematic and symbolic thing then of like, it's the ultimate engineering of the Jedi of like making a lightsaber and then the ultimate mm. engineering of the Mandalorians of, you know, I mean, like I've always assumed the hilt is made out of Beskar, but yeah. then it in itself is something that, yeah, this is something that is dangerous enough to be able to cut through Beskar. Yeah. Also kind of like it lines up with like, it's sort of got a kind of samurai sword look. And like the samurai swords are like oh, always yeah, recommend yeah, yeah. as being yeah. like unbelievably sharp compared to like any of the European yeah. swords and so on. Yeah. That's so much point, so actually. that you could you can legit cut through someone else's sword using a katana if you do it properly. Yeah. yeah. And I think so maybe like, that's why they made it like or excuse me, gave it a unique look to it. Yeah, I think that's definitely I think hundred percent that like the all we know about the way that like, you know, lightsaber colours and everything, lightsaber appearances is that um um you can you know the jedi gets the crystal and then it's all the crystals just like sort of clear and then you get the crystal and then when you put it into lightsaber it just reacts to a different jedi and then it'll be a different color depending on who you are as you know who you are um the only the only anomaly in that is that apparently according to season seven dave floney said that anakin was able to change the Socus crystals from green to blue because he just adjusted the position of them in the hilt i'm not sure how that works but yeah then, then again when you put the lightsaber together as a jedi you use the force to sort of put it all together so me it sits in the position that is the color for you because that's where you put it i don't know anakin shifted it to make he didn't it change the crystals super... he just he just told ahsoka that he actually just he just put like put a green gel filter or, i mean blue gel filter or something in front of it <laughs> he probably, he probably did he, Maybe. He, just, he just changed yeah. it to blue because he thinks blue is better he was it's just like oh of, click oh change color it's a very sort of big brother thing to do it's like you know oh no green you don't want that you want blue there you go yeah um but uh, but yeah so it's like the fact that the dark saber is either incredibly oddly man-made of how it got to be what it is or it's literally tar Vizsla. that's what when he put it together when he put his crystal and saber it made that like just black yeah yeah, yeah. it's like maybe it's I, I don't know if he did that and na- if it did that naturally or he did some stuff to, to the hilt. Maybe whatever stuff he has, if it can cut through, like um, Beskar is whatever he did to it and made it come out in that black color. It's yeah, I, I I don't know like why it is the way it is. Maybe we'll get we'll learn about that this season. But mm. yeah, it, it's it does. I do think it would be cool if it has some properties to it that the others don't have. And you did the other good point you made about that, Xander. You said that it's it's something that's feared as well. Not not feared, but like respected as whoever wields this is a leader of Mandalore. And so it would make sense if this thing is like, it can fight again. It can kill Mandalorians easier than any other, any other lightsaber can. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, which makes me even more concerned for Din. But, oh, yeah. yeah you know. Because um, a lot of people, like I, I'm not on Reddit, so I'm not sure what people mm. say about who could possibly be the one to wield the dark saber. Um, but on Tumblr, it's just because people love Din so much. They were like, oh, what if he wields it? But I was like, yeah. I don't think Din wants that responsibility. He doesn't want, it, yeah. he doesn't want yeah, that. Yeah, he won't want to be the leader. If he saw it, like, he'll be like, nope. nope yeah. I, nope. I, I could see him using it, like, just to... How did this... I think I could see him using it to, to fight and to save himself and, like, in a situation. But I think he'd probably ha- have a moment of, like, just sort of looking at it and realizing this feels, like, I don't know too much power for him, and that he doesn't want it because yeah. it's so mm-hmm. powerful. I don't like it's that's what's so interesting about stuff like with this time of galaxy. Does he even know what a lightsaber is? Like, yeah, because I don't think yeah. I don't think like he doesn't even know what the force is. That's that's sorry, that's another thing I just remember. The fact that he, it's just like that's the thing they say. He said, "May the force be with you" to the New Republic pilot. I think that's sort of thing. This point, of galaxy, no one knows what the force is. It's just something yeah. the rebellion says. That's probably all they sort of know about it. It's just a thing you say. They don't, he doesn't realize that the force is that thing he's trying to learn these secrets about because of the child. He doesn't realize that. He just knows it's a thing that it's a thing you say. As yeah, like, when that happened, I was like, does he even know what it is? Like, that's why I was yeah. confused for a second. I was like, we'll discuss it today. Yeah. So I was like, perfect, yeah. Robert. Yeah, but it's like, I think 
it's a sort of thing of like back in Clone Wars time, everyone knew what the Force was. Yeah, exactly. Children growing up, growing up knew about the Jedi and they knew what you know that this the Force was this thing the Jedi possess. But then it's like out here in the Outer Rim, and especially like growing up as a Mandalorian and gr- growing up as the war was ending, like he just he doesn't know anything about yeah about this side of the galaxy. It, well, we'll, we'll, Are these we'll, predictions for future this episodes? Is, this is predictions for next episode. We'll wrap yeah, up yeah, let's eight, do that. Now, <laughs> Senna, do, shall we get into our theory about uh, what we think? It, this is okay. if next week is the water episode, and the, yeah, I, I think I it, it is. Be, I think it is. I think, I think it, it is. is. Yeah, hopefully, the, the Sasha Banks's character, the woman in the yeah. dark robes of the hood, is going to be there. That is where we have a theory. We have a pretty solid theory. Yeah. When I say solid, this is a uh, a sentence I'm probably going to regret. This is a theory I'm 100% certain of. Theory is... this is the There's parts of this theory that I think I'm 100% certain on. There's parts of it that that I'm speculating on. Okay. Um, so, what we know is when she's shown in the trailer, she's just... Uh, it's when they're talking about the Jedi, specifically the sentence they use of was it a race of enemy warriors sorcerers sorry yeah and we see her just standing like sort enemy of enemy sorcerers just, yeah so we just see her just standing in the crowd sort of staring at din and then he sort of like looks over and then she disappears in the crowd right now straight away looking at her that's not a jedi just staying there in the dark room just sort of staring at him menacingly and then disappearing in the crowd that's not a jedi sort of thing to do and i doubt luke's jedi order which all be around which should all it'd be around this time would be like dressing like that like that's yeah. very sort of like I don't know, bad guy look, right? <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that's not, she's not a Jedi. You and me were talking about Xander and I said, said like, what if it is, could she be like Inquisitor? Maybe like Inquisitor survived. And I said, mm, maybe not. She's maybe not like, I think they're all dead by like this time. Um, and then I use the term, I said, she's like, seems like some kind of like dark side, like acolyte or something. And then you like just- And then I went- Oh my god, wait a minute. And I bolted and upstairs yeah. and came back downstairs with my with copy of Bath. Aftermath, Ooh. which convent yeah. appeared yeah. in, which is already now, already had a crossover. Go into your so, started flicking through that, <laughs> trying to find the page, trying to find the one bit. Now they're described in the book as there's three of them that are meeting this sort of smuggler artifact hunter type character. Three of them are described as wearing black hooded robes two of them masked, and then one of them a young woman who is unmasked but still wearing black hooded robes. Mm. They're here to purchase something from this treasure hunter. It's an artifact he has gotten his hands on, and once they heard about it, they, um, they're the ones that's going, they're going to verify that it's, yeah. it's legit, it's... that it's the actual artifact. Smuggler guy, he unveils the artifact that they're going to be purchasing off of him. It's a red lightsaber. Oh. What he believes it to be and what they believe it to be and what they, upon getting hold of it, certainly think that it most certainly is, is Darth Vader's lightsaber. Oh! Now, Mitch, on to the other bit, which you then thought of as I was explaining this, as I was now, going I through. Thought of, I, have to to pi- I have a picture ready to go to go in the group chat, by the way. I've got oh, nice. Um So, Sleep. about six months ago, I want to say. Oh, probably not that long ago. That was a while ago, actually. Oh, well, yeah, six, probably like, six by now. It's like middle of the middle of the year, anyway. So they showed that they they wrapped on Mando season two, and someone shared this uh, the uh, wrap gifts that all of the the I think specifically the lighting team got right, and this little ba- this little sort of um badge thing, right? Patch. And the badge says patch, sorry, and it says second unit lighting Mandalorian season two, and it has uh, the mud horn insignia mando's little little tiny mando uh, insignia and little baby yoda insignia either side and then behind the mud horn insignia what we have visualized and looks very much like is obviously the dark saber crossing blades with what looks a lot like vader's lightsaber i'll post it in the group chat let me see it <laughs> let me get a picture of vader's lightsaber for comparison. uh Damn, that looks sick. Now, so that's like straight away we all thought like, why, why, why is why is there two lightsabers? Mm. Like, and it's like why is it why is it why is the dark saber like crossing blades with another lightsaber? And on top of that, it's like that looks like Vader's lightsaber. Why would it be Vader's lightsaber? Like that was like literally I looked at that picture. 
back whenever that was. And I thought, uh, yeah, why would that be Vader's lightsaber? Like, what, what would his be doing in this? I thought, is it going to be a flashback to... I don't know. While the series is my favorite, it's going to be flashback to, like, Maul versus Vader at some point between uh, <laughs> Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Like, you know... How what's wh how's it gonna be Vader's lightsaber fighting the dark saber right? And straight away the fact that that's obviously the dark saber the first one and the second one looks like Vader's one. I thought naturally that would mean these are two lightsabers that are in the show. So I thought okay I guess Vader's lightsaber is gonna be in the show in some way. I guess that means Vader's gonna be in the show in some way. Probably in a flashback. That's what I thought. Yeah. But then now we know from a book that introduced Cobb, who's already been in the series. We're told about this order of acolytes that wear dark robes with hoods and that have Vader's lightsaber, which is shown here fighting the dark saber. Now, that's more than circumstantial evidence, you know. Yeah. That is, <laughs> that is, that uh, that is, uh, yeah. That's why I think I'm 100% certain about this. That she is, if not that, uh young woman that was buying the lightsaber because she's also described her description doesn't quite match what sasha banks look uh banks right yeah sasha banks yeah, what sasha looks like um but the fact that she matches the description of what the cultists look like and they're in possession pos and she's like sort of following din and they're in possession of a weapon that is shown here insinuating that is in mando season two and there's no other reason that vader's lightsaber would be here unless in the hands of this cultist was around at this time in a book that introduced another character from this season, I feel like she's a member of that order and she may or may not have Vader's lightsaber. I'm curious about, and you guys can answer it because I'm just confused. How did they get Vader's lightsaber? Uh, same way that Ben Doesn't explain has... in the book. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't explain. I guess same way that okay. Ben... Same way that Ben has <laughs> Vader's helmet in Force Awakens. They just, okay. Someone, someone, they, I guess Peel would have... Well, you said that it's like the sort of thing that everyone found out the Death Star was destroyed. Everyone probably flocked uh, yeah. to Endor to f look, scavenge anything, whatever they could find. Yeah. Someone came across Vader's funeral pyre, and he's okay. like, I assume, I assume Luke would have just left the lightsaber with Vader's body. I, I also cons if, um, considered it would be cool, a little sort of bridging a gap between um, this and Force Awakens. If there's a scene where we're like at the cultist base or whatever. And then the others come across Vader's helmet melted as it as as it is yeah. shown. Dude, in Force that would be so cool. Because like, be like, yeah, because like Ben had yeah. to get it from somewhere. Yeah. So I think it would make sense if like if they have it and they track that down as well as Vader's lightsaber. Also, I think yeah. I like the idea of Vader's lightsaber is a little damaged, especially if it was on the funeral pilot. It's like yeah, yeah. it's a bit like. I think that. So I hope was... they, yeah, I hope they don't keep it pristine because, like yeah. you said, I would like it to be damaged. That would especially make sense when considering the way it's just sort of described in the scene. They're showing this lightsaber and they'll say, Is that Vader's lightsaber? And he says, Yeah, it's Vader's lightsaber. And they also look at it and say, Okay, it's Vader's lightsaber. They'll leave. And then this, the assistant to the shopkeeper says, Was it Vader's lightsaber? He says, I don't know, but they seem to think it is. So like, it's sort of not really recognizable. Like, it's, that, that makes sense. It's kind of damaged and it's hard to recognize if it is Vader's lightsaber. Um, but that's where I think the theory comes in that uh, there could be... T I, okay, so this is this is all speculation now. That is yeah. stuff that I think... I, I'm pretty sure I can confirm. Because just like... Just just one more time. Just just because I'm so excited about it. No, so go for it. The evidence is there's this woman in this dark hooded robes following Din. She's insinuated to be a force wielder or something to do with the force because of the fact that what the dialogue says as we're shown her in the trailer and she's sort of stalking Din, right? So she's a bad force user or connected to the dark side in some way, right? Yeah. We see her dark hooded robes, a, um, a people, an order of um, like dark side acolytes are in possession of Vader's lightsaber, which is a lightsaber that is insinuated to be in this show because of this rap gift that everyone, the lighting team got. That's, I don't see how else Vader's lightsaber would be here, but we have a, we have a reason for Vader's lightsaber to be here and it connects to this character. So, I'm confident saying that if not her, her her faction has Vader's lightsaber and it'll make yeah. an appearance in the show. Um, now this that's the facts and that's what I'm pretty confident in. And it's, it's also you know the main reason I'm so confident in it. it's it's in the same book that she's Cobb. We've already had some from yeah. that book. I was also going to say like yeah. if that's also what they've gone off that means that there might be other stuff that they follow from yeah. that book as well. So I'm interested and it's nice to see that you know. 
not that they don't follow like books or anything, but to see that mm. they're following like this a few storylines from a book kind of seems nice because all the yeah. stories that I've ever followed are from books. So it's like it's kind of nice that Star yeah. Wars is doing that now it, too. Yeah, it, especially when this is a book that's from how many years ago, Sander? Uh, the first aftermath is from twenty fifteen, I think. Oh, damn. Yeah, and now it makes sense because Mando is around the same time period as them. All right, we're gonna bring them into the show because it's interesting uh, plot lines. Um. But yes, that's all. That's all the facts. I am willing to say completely. I 100% think that she is with that faction, and she will, if not, she'll probably wield the lightsaber because she might not be yeah. the same woman that bought it. But she'll probably wield it because when she seems like such a major character, I doubt they'd introduce her and have oh, and here's here's the person that's going to wield it instead of her. Yeah. So yeah. It's like why would they show her on yeah. screen if she's not like yeah. going to so use it or something? Yeah. So that's that's my theory. She's going to have Vader's lightsaber. Um, now plus, also- of course, plus of course, there's the fact that um, that Sasha's a wrestler. You know, she's like essentially a stu- she she's essentially she's a, a stud woman. Wrestler, yeah. yeah. And so like, I feel like you know, it's this is also her first acting role as well in yeah. something. So I figure like if you're ca- if you're casting someone experiences in well stunts in like you know having like a kind of teased as a major role in the show it's obviously going to be a pretty yeah. action role then yeah so the, you know because yeah it's a, that's the only thing that we can only speculate about why they wouldn't have destroyed it yet yeah um maybe they convinced pardon me maybe they convinced uh each other that we need to keep it and use it to i, I don't know it, it's it's i it's i think it's going to play some part um it's like too good of a thing that's been set up that there's this people that have Vader's lightsaber from that rap gift that's insinuated Vader's lightsaber is in the yeah. show. It's we know there's a lightsaber fight. We, it's been hinted there's a lightsaber fight or a lightsaber fights or at least a lightsaber fight in the season. We have two lightsabers that are shown clashing. So I think there's gonna be a lightsaber fight between the dark saber and Vader's lightsaber. Whoever's I just willing to wonder that who is, wields it because th- I'm curious now. Yeah. This is what I am wondering about. Um I think this is the first thing that occurred to me, right? Is so in the Rise of Skywalker, Palpatine on Exegol has like this Sith cult that's with him, right? And it occurred to me that maybe because, you know, they're like doing all this stuff after Palpatine's death, like hunting down Vader's lights and everything, they're this sort of dark side and Sith cult, right? Mm-hmm. As I thought, well, maybe it's like they want the child's for potentially the same reason the Empire wants Childs, which is to with cloning force wielders to try and do some stuff with Palpatine, right? That's what I'm that's what I'm still thinking. That I think that's the only reason the Empire would want to do something with cloning and a force sensitive child is something to do with Palpatine. Oh, yeah. That's like mm-hmm. I'll just say yeah. I actually unfortunately had to cut that from the last episode. So is it okay if you can like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. say what you yeah. said? So yeah. basically, uh the scientist in season one that was experimenting with Dr. Pershing. Yes, god damn it. Um, <laughs> that was experimenting with the baby. Uh, he had an insignia, but yeah, basically his logo uh, insinuates he's connected to the Tark Initiative, which is the main source of scientific groups of the Empire, and the Kaminoans, the cloners that produce the clone army. So it it's sort of insinuated that he's doing something with the baby that's involving cloning, and cloning Force-sensitive people and very Force-sensitive people. The only thing that I see, the only stake the Empire would have in that right now is because it's one of Palpatine's contingency plans. They're getting stuff ready for what we then see in The Rise of Skywalker, which I do kind of like because it feels less sudden then. If it's like something has been going on for 30 years in the background, they've been, he has a contingency plan. They're working on it this whole time. That's the Mary's I think they'd be after the Childs. Um, I don't see why else they want to clone a Force Sensitive unless to make just an army of Force Sensitive, but that's kind of boring. They tried that with Inquisitors. Yeah. So that's what I think they're up to. So I thought maybe the the Sith cultists, the Acolytes, which we think uh, that's one thing in Sasha Banks' character is, is with, maybe they want the child for the same reason the Empire does, which is to help bring back Palpatine. But I thought maybe there can be conflicts between the two of them because the Empire going, we have orders to collect this child and do this with it in name of the Emperor. This is our orders. And the Colts are saying, we're connected to the Emperor, not through rank and uh, like the same way you are. We're connected to him through he's a Sith Lord and we worship him. We have a claim to this child more than you do. <sighs> we need to take creepy. it. And that sort of thing. Like that they might say, they they might think they supersede. It's also worth mentioning. Mm. Oh. Here you go. Yeah, it's uh, worth mentioning. It was in the uh, the um, the visual dictionary for the Rise of Skywalker that they've 
officially said that yeah the sith eternal on exegol um the acolytes of the beyond are their field agents like right. explicitly okay. said they're they're connected they're, they're and probably, then yeah that's a good theory for the mandalorian yeah. as well then so yes yeah, so i think it that's yeah something I, that's something i could see easily and then you know that that's where I, that's where i could see gideon like dueling sasha's character because he you know well she's got you know that they're fighting over the child and she draws vader's lightsaber and he draws the dark saber and they duel because he you know because they have a claim to the child more than he does that's the way they see it and that's where i could see there being conflict between uh the sith and the empire yeah and and then ultimately when we see in the rise of skywalker it sort of came together both there's a sith cult that was really working with palpatine but they helped rebuild a new empire in the shadows with palpatine so it's kind of like they both came together yeah i don't know but it's that's my best bet as to how we would get the vader's lightsaber clashing with dark saber is the sith um in conflict with the empire yeah Mm. Oh, that's so interesting. And just like a cult sounds more dangerous than like the Empire. And yeah. that's why it freaks me out. So that's why I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> and and then this is all very speculation right here. Yeah, it's all but speculation, but theory. It's about to get more speculation. Um <laughs> but this is where you put your tinfoil hats on. But um what is it something that did occur to me that, that, that could happen? Maybe it's possible. If this character is going to be in the show, and it seems like it's confirmed she was, we talked about this last week, Ahsoka is going to be in the show, right? And I thought it could be really interesting for doing stuff with, with Ahsoka, interacting with the child and like talking about the Force and something. It'd be really interesting to do something with Din gets Vader's lightsaber and it ends up back with Ahsoka. And she like maybe gets the crystal and, and heals it and turns the blade white. Like she did with her Inquisitor's, uh, the lightsaber and Inquisitor. But if she gets oh. Anakin's crystal, Vader's crystal, and redeems it that could be a really powerful moment and then i thought <laughs> it's just uh it's, it's just completely speculation before it's something like maybe if she doesn't have anything else to do with it maybe she sets that crystal aside for the child's lightsaber when he oh. meets it and that could be a really interesting thing if he then has a white lightsaber when he eventually has one yeah and i mean it could happen like in both ways either way like she may do it either for the child or for anakin or even just both like yeah. in a way, like doing it for Anakin, but then passing it on to like the new generation of like yeah. whether they're called Jedi or just like you know just warriors and protectors, yeah. you know. Oh, now but my just, my heart. But yeah, that's just, it. Just occurs to me. I mean, if Soka's if Soka's in the series, and it sounds like she's going to be, and then Vader's lightsaber ends up with her somehow, that would be a really powerful moment. It would like be. She, she gets Anakin's lightsaber after he's died. Yeah, there's a lot they can do. Um with with mando we talked about this again last week but it's like what i really like about the show is it's like we're not taking these characters and going okay you're only important because you're connected to this character we're not doing that these are people that they're spectating what's happening in the galaxy yeah. around them hmm. like they have no idea who but they probably haven't yeah didn't probably has no idea who vader is you might have heard yeah. the stories but he doesn't know who he is um and just like you know stuff like that of just like that the stuff that's really uh, impactful and emotional to the fans watching it and to the characters around the other uh, main characters but they're sort of just witnessing what's going on in this larger universe and well, i think this is a like... story about this is a story about all the normal people in star wars yeah yeah know? yeah basically we've got like all of the all the jedi and clones and like all of the major like sort of war heroes and so on and this is about well this is everybody else is just you know yeah yeah that's just trying to get by you know, and even it's just, just showing here. it's showing like kind of like the empire's influence on just normal people like besides mm-hmm. the jedi and all that stuff so i kind of like that as well like yeah there's like you said mitch last week like there's the influence of the jedi in this series but it's not so heavy as like the movies or like yeah. like clone wars so that's why i kind of appreciate for this one because it's like a different perspective in just the big world that star wars yeah exactly just a simple thing that people don't know what the force is really mm. anymore um and yeah like the din doesn't know what that doesn't pardon me i don't doesn't i don't expect we'll know what a lightsaber is he didn't even know what the jedi were like you know that was yeah. that was because keep in mind those stories about jedi fighting mandalorians are like two thousand years old at this point so they're like you know there's ancient stories um they're so like yeah stuff like that just like you're seeing uh these sort of pretty normal people dealing with being becoming a part of 
um, taking their first steps into a larger world, basically, when mm-hmm. the child comes along. And uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how he progressed. And I think we're going to get the first hint of that, hopefully next week, if it is indeed the one on the water planet, which I feel like it will be, and we'll, Sasha's character will be there, and then we'll get a glimpse of this dark side cult. Hopefully, you know. let's hope. Allegedly, and hopefully. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're hoping yeah, we're right about hopefully. that. I think the evidence is promising, put it that way. One. Yeah. Uh, oh, we have to end the episode. Are you yeah, going to say it this time, right. Mitch? We got a, a, yeah, sure, why not? Um, yeah, you, you say it. Do we have anything else to say about Mando? Or are we done? No, I think we're done. Right. No, I think, I think I've covered it all. Um, well, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for listening and uh, watching. And uh, we'll see you next week for another Aftermath and made a Force review. And this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Hey, there we go. Bye, everyone. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Woo!